Hi, in this video, we shall see the summary of Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College, a poem by Thomas Gray. Thomas Gray is a notable poet from the 18th century. This poem praises innocence and the unadulterated life of children. The poem's main message concerns the process of growing up and acquiring knowledge, a process that can put a person on a path to woe and unhappiness. Gray's famous works include Elegy Written in a Country Churchyard and Ode on the Death of a Favorite Cat Drowned in a Tub of Goldfishes. This poem provides a view of the school Thomas Gray attended as a child. The spires, towers and crown create a royal vision reminiscent of a castle. The Henry is a reference to King Henry VI who founded Eton in 1440 and the mention of Windsor Castle reinforces the kingly picture. He includes images of nature painting a visual of the grove, lawn and flowers in the surrounding landscape. He also brings in river themes. He details how the view of Eton College makes them feel. It fills him with happy memories of their careless childhood. Now they are not a child and as an adult they experience pain and they possess a weary soul. Looking at Eton College in the distance gives them a respite from their troubles and lets them breathe a second spring as they recall a more fruitful and joyous time. He continues to focus on the carefree aspects of childhood. He notes some of the activities the children play outside on the Margaret Green. They can chase the rolling circle speed and run after a hoop or they can urge the flying ball as they play games. He admits that childhood is more than just fun and games. The children have earnest business as they must attend classes. Yet, these graver hours don't compromise his rosy portrayal of their youth. The demands of school sweeten liberty and make their playtime that much more enjoyable. He alludes to what is sure to impact the children in the inevitable future. He notes how the children must snatch a fearful joy as if a time will come when the children won't be so happy. He then lists the carefree qualities of childhood. Nonchalant and unworried, the children don't grasp onto happy moments, nor do they fret over their troubles. They can forget their tears as soon as shed. Unburdened by adult responsibilities, feelings and anxieties, the children are naturally healthy and witty. Disquieting, their thoughts don't keep them awake at night, thus the slumbers light. He details the doom that awaits the children. Innocent and pure, the children are not uh, yet aware of the horrors of adulthood. Living in the moment, the children can't fathom black misfortunes, baleful train, which will soon ambush and seize them. Now he pivots to the perennial feelings that affect many adults at this stage of life. Vultures capture the grown-up mind and fill it with fraught feelings like shame, love, envy, despair and sorrow. These emotions are rankling and piercing and not at all like the carefree emotions of blith children. In adult society, ambition lies and apathy reign. When adults cry, they don't blissfully forget their tears. Instead, they mock and ridicule their own sadness since true feelings are a thing of the past. As a person transitions to an adult, he asserts that the person becomes corrupt with blood defilled. As people grow older, their body ages too and the process racks the joints. The work of adulthood strains their bodies and put them on a path towards death. Finally, he maintains the inevitability of this onerous outcome. To each his suffering, all are men, condemned alone to groan. At the same time, he won't tell the children about their frightening future. Why should they know their fate? He wishes to let the children have their happiness while they can and they see no need to destroy their paradise. Besides, the children's ignorance is bliss while the speaker's wisdom and experience is mere folly. Now let's read the poem. A distant spires, a antique towers that crowned the watery glade. 
where grateful science still adores her Henry's whole shade. And A, that from the stately bro of Windsor's height, the expanse below, of grow of lawn of mid survey, whose turf, whose shade, whose flowers among wanders the hoary Thames along a silver winding way. Ah, happy hills, ah, pleasing shade, ah, fields beloved in vain, where once my careless childhood strayed, a stranger yet to pain. I feel the gales that from air below a momentary bliss bestow, as waving fresh they glad some wing, my weary soul they seem to soothe, and redolent of joy and youth to breathe a second spring. Say, Father Thames, for thou hast seen full many a sprightly race disporting on thy Margaret Green, the paths of pleasure's trace. Who foremost now delight to cleave with pliant arm thy glassy wave, the captive linnet with entrail, which entrail? What idle progeny succeed to chase the rolling circle speed or urge the flying ball? While some on earnest business bent, they murmuring labours ply, gain us graver hearts that bring constraint to sweeten liberty. Some bold adventures disdain the limit of the little rain. And unknown regions dare descry, still as they run, they look behind. They hear a voice in every wind, and snatch a fearful joy. Gay hope in days by fancy fed, less pleasing when possessed. The tear forgotten as soon as shed, the sunshine of the breast. There is buxom health of rosy hue, wild wit, invention ever new. And lively cheer of vigour born, the thoughtless day, the easy night, the spirits pure, the slumber's light, that flieth the approach of morn. Alas, regardless of their doom, the little victims play. No sense have they of ills to come, nor care beyond today. Yet see how all around them wait the ministers of human fate, and black misfortune's baleful train. Ha, show them where it ambush stand to seize their prey, the murderous band. Ah, tell them they are men. These shall the fury passion stare. The vultures of the mind, disdainful anger, pallid fear, and shame that skulls behind. Or pining love shall waste their youth, or jealousy with rankling tooth, that's inly gnaw the secret heart, and envy, van, and faded care. Grim visaged, comfortless despair, and sorrow's piercing dart. Ambition, this shall tempt to rise, then whirls the wrath from high. To bitter scorn, a sacrifice, and grinning infamy. The stings of falsehood, those shall try, and harden unkindness, altered eye. That mocks the tear, it forced to flow, and keep remorse with blood defilled. And moody barrenness, laughing wild, amid severe oak. Lo, in the while of years beneath, a grisly troop are seen, the painful family of death more hideous than they queen. This racks the joints, this fires the veins, that every labouring sinew strains. Those in the deeper vitals rage, lo, poverty to fill the band, that numbs the soul with icy hand and slow consuming age. To each is suffering all are men, condemned alone to groan. The tender for another's pain, the unfeeling for his own. Yet, ah, why should they know their fate, since sorrow never comes too late, and happiness too swiftly flies, thought would destroy their paradise. No more, where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. And here ends the poem. If you have anything more to add on to what I've said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe and support. Thank you.